All right, welcome to our latest webinar. My name is Coach Justin, and I'm joined here today also with Coach Greg Pear. And uh, we're doing a webinar on envelopes, the next level. Hopefully, as you've been going through My Money Wellness, you've had a chance to learn about envelopes and some of the basics. But usually, like anything else, once we get started, there are questions or we're not doing as well as we'd like to do. And so we want to take this time with our webinar today to go through how you can take your envelopes to the next level. Again, I'm joined by Coach Greg Pear. And Greg, why don't you go ahead and share with us a recent article that you read about how folks are going to use their IRS refund that I think will go really well with what we're talking about today. Thanks, Justin. Uh, welcome, My Money Wellness users. Uh, as always, we're excited to bring you um, some more education and just some more uh, viewpoints on um, things that we certainly just want you to get better on a month-by-month -month basis. So um, at this stage of the game, you may have some envelopes in place, and we've got groceries, we've got eating out, and we're doing a pretty good job on those. The article that Justin was referring to, it just was simple, man on the street, hey, what are you going to use your IRS refund for? Very pragmatic approach by one dad. I am going to help my daughter with college tuition. Pretty good use of an IRS refund. Another person said, I'm simply going to pay some bills. Another person said, I am going to go on vacation. And another person said, I'm going to get caught up. So it's not so much that first response, help my daughter with college education. To me, that sounded like it was a gift. What a generous father. It's the other three that I had that problem with. I'm going to go on vacation, I'm going to pay bills, and I'm going to get caught up. And so I kind of started thinking about that. It's, so what you're really saying, or what those man on the street people were saying is, I'm going to misbehave 364 days out of the year, and then I'm going to rely on or account for my IRS return or maybe a bonus from work to allow for my bad behavior um, to get caught up. And so I kind of was thinking, it's like, boy, isn't that sad? And that was a mother who said, I'm going to go on vacation. So what that kind of said was, so if I don't get an income tax refund, I can't take my family on vacation. And so with that behavior, and now as we're, we're again, fine-tuning our envelopes and our budgets, we know we're going to go on vacation, or most of us are, and we want to. So why are we not saving for vacation on a month-by-month -month basis? Why are we not budgeting properly so that we can pay our bills on a month-by-month -month basis? Why are we using those types of refunds to get caught up? And so as we do kind of work through our budgets, it's now at this stage of the game that we're going to encourage to start tightening some things. No longer, you know, um, do we need maybe all of our grocery number, money. If we can just shave $25 here and there, maybe we can find that money to put into what if we had a vacation envelope and we're contributing to uh, that vacation envelope every single month, much like we are Christmas. So that was kind of, I guess, you know, one of my, um, uh, I guess, immediate feedbacks when I saw that article, Justin. No, that's very good, Greg. And, you know, what we're really encouraging at the end of the day is not being normal, uh, but being weird when it comes to money. And again, you're already doing that by being a part of My Money Wellness and doing things like a budget and doing the envelope system. And one of the things I say that has been helping my clients and the users at My Money Wellness understand this envelope system to the next level is look at it as if there are two piles. If there's pile one of envelopes that you use every month, okay, and this could be things like groceries, and you're going to put money in it every month, and you're going to spend it every month. But then you're going to have categories that we call non-monthlies, where every month, kind of like vacation, as Greg said earlier, we're going to put money back every month, but not necessarily take the money out of the envelope every month. So those envelopes should, in theory, be getting bigger and bigger on a monthly basis. Well, what does that look like? Well, for monthly, and by the way, this list here is not exhaustive or comprehensive. These are just some suggested envelopes. So for your monthly, uh, it's things like groceries, household items, eating out, entertainment, maybe a date night, fun money, or miscellaneous. Those are good ideas for envelopes to put money in every month, and you're going to be spending almost all of it every month. And I thought Greg had a great point. 
you know, what if there's an envelope every month, maybe eating out. Since you've been doing envelopes, you've been spending a lot less, and every month you have about $25 to $50 left over. Well, now let's maybe park that over in the non-monthly side where we have things like clothing, car repairs, house repairs, gifts, vacation or medical, and we're going to send it back every month. Again, those envelopes you're not going to spend every month, but we're going to put every month some money into those envelopes, and that's going to do a couple of things. Number one, you're not going to have to use the emergency fund anymore because you're going to pre-fund this. So now the emergency fund almost gets forgotten about because you're funding car repairs, as an example, and so when you need new brake pads, you're not going, ooh, 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 emergency. What you're doing is, oh, car repair, Perfect, got enough money. Now, obviously, if you didn't have enough in the car repair fund, then yes, that's where you can go uh, back to the emergency fund. And I kind of want to camp out on gifts just a second, because with gifts, we always think of Christmas. And that's a great start. But you and I both know that there's other things besides Christmas. There's birthdays, weddings, graduations. So when you think of things like gifts, kind of think about how much you're going to spend in a year for gifts in total. Divide that by 12. That way, you're not going to taking money at the Christmas envelope to buy Susie her birthday gift or to buy your husband his birthday gift or buy uh, your, your niece a graduation gift. Have that as all of that in there and you will begin to win. Now what's real interesting is under medical you might be thinking, well, you know, why would I want to save up for medical in little bite-sized chunks? And, and Greg, you got a great story there. Why don't you share that for us? So are you, you're talking about my dental, uh, my recent dental surgery business? Absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, good and bad. Again, um, we we contribute to a medical envelope. A, a, another thing that that medical envelope could be used for. My wife and I are generally pretty healthy, but how cool would it be if you're contributing twenty five, fifty bucks a month, and eventually um, you've got enough to cover your deductible? That's an area where a lot of people miss out on. I've got to use my emergency fund for my deductible. Um, and, and so, well, not if you're dumping 50 bucks a month and you're somewhat healthy. Or, you know, some of you might have S FSAs or HSAs, and that's all well and good, too. But on top of the FSA, FSA, HSA money, are you still going to need some deductible, and are you still going to have to dip into the emergency fund? So even if you do have HSA or FSA, I'd still see if you can sneak a medical envelope in there, even if it's 5 or 10 or $15 a month. Um, this is not about the amount. This is about that behavior. Um, my story is uh, um, I had to have some dental surgery, and um, I think I got about a $6,500 quote on some dental surgery. And because my wife and I had been contributing to a medical envelope for many, many, many years, we've got a fully funded emergency fund. We've got emergency funds for everything. Um, you know, we, we had several thousand in that medical fund, and I kind of went to my dentist and I said, um, do I want to try to wait around and maybe get a cooling off period and try to get some, some one-off insurance because I'm on HSA right now, um, or, um, you know, could I save you a bunch of paperwork and can I offer you $5,000 cash um, on the day of the surgery instead of 6500 He kind of looked at me and and said, well, yeah, I'll do it for that. And so, in essence, that was a savings of $6,500, and you can do some of those types of things. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, Justin is at Strong Tower, Iowa. I'm at Greg Pear, G-R-E-G-P-A-R-E. -E. Just yesterday I tweeted, when I see something, uh, when I see a sign that says 100% financing available, that's code for Greg Pear has cash up front, he better get a huge discount. So, um, you know, there's power in the cash, and, and again, that's the whole, um, you know, whole theory behind My Money Wellness and, and all of this behavior and why you're doing some of those types of things. And so you may not have a $5,000 dental surgery bill, but gosh dang, you know, what if you're putting $25 a month into house repairs and one of your children throws a brick through the window? Okay, we don't even have to get into the emergency fund. The window's 200 bucks. You know, in a full, in a couple, four, five, six, eight months, we got a little money in house repairs. So that's the that's the theory behind you know some of those uh, non monthly envelopes. Thanks, Greg. Uh, with that, and you know, not only 
you know, envelopes. Again, even when we start doing the envelopes, there may be that impulse, there may be that. But Justin, you know, we still want to use our credit card because it's zero percent. And as we say on my money wellness, you know, we recommend using cash because when you use cash, you pay attention better because plastic has been proven. You will spend an average of twelve to eighteen percent more when you use plastic versus cash. And you know, case in point that we like to use all the time is McDonald's found this out prior to going to plastic. They were four dollars and fifty cents was the average ticket. Now it's seven bucks uh, at average, so a forty-five percent increase. So just imagine going to work tomorrow and your boss gave you a raise of forty-five percent of your current salary. That's what McDonald's felt, and all the other fast food chains when they did this. And I noticed this. You know, I, you know, I'll admit I wasn't following this stuff to a T many years ago. I am now. Uh, but when you know, I'll never forget when the credit card machines first came on the scenes of the fast food restaurants, and I'm like, who would ever finance their burger? Well, I happen to be late going into work, and I'm hungry, and I need to get something to eat. I had no money. Payday's Friday. It's Wednesday. I'm in line. How am I going to pay for this? Like, well, just this once, I'll put it on a credit card. And what happened was slowly I began to get more into that. I never said I was going to do it but one time. That one time I did it led to many charges later, many interests later. And so that's why we just say, guys, pay cash. It really works. And um, you know, if you're looking for proof in the pudding, here's what we just got recently from a my money current my money wellness user. It says this: It's an exciting morning for us. I just checked the checkbook, which is usually a dread for me. We've went full on 100% using the cash system with envelopes our money and putting everything else up over in savings after paying bills. In the first 14 days, we have built $660 in savings while starting only with $65. It's crazy to think how much money we were wasting and didn't realize it. We love the cash envelope system. And again, that's from a recent My Money Wellness user. And uh, you know what? There are so many stories like that out there, and we want to encourage you to share your stories with us. And so one place you can do that is by emailing us at support at mymoneywellness.com. We want to hear from you. So if, if you've got a recent story where you're using envelopes, let us know. Or maybe you've paid off a debt or you're getting along with money with your spouse. You never thought that was possible. Or you're single and you're not uh, abusing spending your money. Whatever the case may be, we want to be there to help you. But maybe that's not you. Maybe you're going through My Money Wellness right now and you're struggling a little bit. And if that's you, uh, you know, by again, reach out. Maybe it's time to sit down with a coach or meet with a coach online. Again, support at mymoneywellness.com. Or maybe all of this is just confusing and you're going, Justin, you make this sound so simple, but I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to log in. Uh, again, reach out to a coach at support at mymoneywellness.com. We are here to help you guys become successful with your money. Uh, Coach Greg, any closing thoughts here as we wrap up today? Uh, with regard to that slide right there, another way that we can begin to have extra cash in savings and in the checking account, as you guys are doing your budgets, if your electric bill is $100, don't budget $100. Weather changes, bump that up by a hundred and a quarter, make it work in your budget, um, and then all of a sudden when you get the $100 bill, a month, two months, three months from now, you're going to look at your budget and say, why do I have this leftover built up money? Well, it's because you're setting yourselves up for success, not failure. I'm not saying go overboard and say, oh, well, we only eat out $100 a month, so let's just budget $200 and hope to save. That is not the point of the exercise. I'm talking typically about utilities. Um, if, if your cell phone is $93 or $98, $98, put $100 you know, in there because even that $2 will, will grow over time. Um, and then you will come up four or five months down the road, wow, I've got an extra $300 in the bottom of checking account. Hmm, I think I'm going to pay some debt with that. Um, and so um, another, one other little point about envelopes, I'd love to, I'd love to hear um, some people, what kind of weirdo envelopes do you have? You know, I've got, I've got, we've got clients that have scrapbooking envelopes. I've got one client who has a snake purchasing envelope. He's a reptile collector guy, and he's got a snake envelope. Um, 
you know, again, we're not we're not telling you to do that. We're asking you where your priorities are. You know, this guy's uh, almost out of debt, and so you know what, um, we're going to allow him to put twenty five bucks a month into a snake purchasing envelope if 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 that helps keep him going. Now, again. Um, let's not take that to an extreme and lose focus of what we're doing. But I, I you know, just weirdo envelopes and types of things like that, and and um, you know, and then all of a sudden, uh, this cash builds up. You're exactly right, Greg. And you know, as you were saying that, that got me to thinking about uh, you know one of the times where I spoke at an event and someone spoke up and said, you know, one of my envelopes that I need to have is for my grandkids because I like to overspend on my grandkids. And so how cool would it be? You know, nowhere are we saying you can't have fun with the grandkids or your kids, but again, you might have a unique impulse area to you. You know, food is one that's kind of universal. You may have one for you that's unique, and it's okay to say, I have an envelope for this. All you're saying out loud is, I want to win with money, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. So again, uh, thank you for participating in our webinar today. Um, on envelopes, taking it to the next level. As always, reach out to Dave, Greg, or myself, or any of our coaches at My Money Wellness, and you can do that at support at mymoneywellness.com. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day.